can you use the HTO chart and drawing chips to multiply? Yes, you can. In fact, it's absolutely awesome for teaching scaling of place value uh, by multiplying by tens. Let me show you what I mean. So let's say we're just going to do 2 times 10. So here's two ones. Well, multiply means I'm going to make, I'm going to have 10 copies of each thing. So this guy right here, I'm going to have 10 copies of him. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And this one, 2. Now instead of 1, it's going to be 10. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. 9, 10. Now, what happens when you have this in a place value chart? Make a group of 10. Move it over. Make a group of 10. Move it over. And now you have two 10s and zero 1s. This is just uh, a good way to show with mathematical reasoning, what's really happening instead of using uh, expressions like uh, add a zero or drop a zero or move the decimal point. Uh, those really don't have, those expressions don't have uh, this, the way I learned it, honestly, but uh, those don't have any mathematical reasoning and there's no reason for uh, kids to have any, to make any sense out of those expressions. But this is a good way to show it. And it works not just for this, but you can also use it to extend more complicated examples. What if I had... Twenty three times ten. What happens? Okay, so now I have two tens, and each one of those multiply it by ten. One, two, this three, four, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Yeah, it's a bit tedious. 1, 2, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. I'm not suggesting that uh, you have kids do this every time they multiply something by 10. It's just it's far too tedious. But it's a good way to help them get their heads around what's really happening when you multiply by 10. So now that's 10 tens, that's 100. Here's another 10 tens, that's another 100. And you know what's going to happen here with the ones, all of these are now tens. So now you've got one there, that group there, this group here, right? And what happened? Well, now you have two hundreds and three tens and zero ones. And it doesn't take too many examples of this before the kids really just see the examples. They know what happens. You can also use it to just multiply by things other than 10. Not my favorite way to do it, but you can. Take the same 23. If I was going to multiply it by 7, how would that look? Well, you know how this is going to go by now, except it's not going to be 10 things. It's going to be 7. So it's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. 
One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And we're just gonna use the same rules that we have already used before. We're making groups of ten. It's just it doesn't change really, right? So there, I need seven and three more. That's a ten. And this seven needs three more. That's a 10. And we have one, one left over. And how many 10s do we have? Can we make any groups of 10 here? Of course we can. There's a group of 10. That's now 10 10s is 100. And then we have one, two, three, four, five, six 10s left over. And 100, and there we have it. 23 times 7 equals 161.